We're gonna to chat today about my experience with the Asus PG27UQ monitor, and more specifically, the customer support that is really falling short on the behalf of Asus. I'm gonna give you a little background as to what's been going on. First minor thing uh, that I noticed, and for some people this could be a major thing, uh, because of the way that Asus sells their Aura ecosystem. So if you have their motherboard, their graphics cards, um, their monitors now, their peripherals, that's a hard word to say. You're supposed to be able to use Asus Aura, their software, to control all of the items. So you can match uh, RGB lighting, however you wanted to do it however you want to do it. Uh, you're supposed to be able to tie that all together seamlessly, supposedly, and have an experience that they claim is better than anything out there. When I use the Asus Aura software, it works fine if you're using the motherboard, G-Skill Trident Z RAM, and um, their graphics cards. When you add in their uh, Spatha, it gets a little interesting, but not the worst. I don't particularly use that uh, mouse anymore. I've actually switched over to the Rocket uh, Leader uh, for other reasons we can talk about in the future. Uh, and then I also have their Claymore keyboard. If you use the Claymore keyboard with the Asus uh, Aura software, they tell you don't use it with it. Kind of confusing. They want you to use their Armory software to control the lighting because they have no one issues with Aura. There's your first red flag. Well, you, here comes the, the PG27UQ monitor. The, the MSRP of $2,000 for a 27-inch uh, 4K UHD HDR 144 hertz, uh, uh, hertz refresh rate monitor. A true gaming monitor. I mean, this thing does look amazing. But... You plug in via USB to the uh, motherboard, and in this situation, I'm using the Maximus 11 formula motherboard, so their latest uh, formula line. The Aura software, or the Aura lighting as a whole, freezes up the minute that this is plugged in. You unplug it, everything works as close to normal as possible. Again, leaving out their Claymore product. Minor detail, but annoying at best. So I unplug it and I decide, okay, well, I'm not gonna sync it. In my situation, how I have my office set up, uh, people walking in can see the back of my monitor and can see the front of my computer. So the idea for me was, it'd be really nice to have it all tied together. Well, that doesn't work. Okay, so we move on. I, start, I plugged it in on first boot, it's really weird. First boot, you're fine. You get into BIOS. I'm going to actually exit out of this game here. And I'm excited to get everything set up, uh, get my software installed. And then I go to reboot it, and I, which I'm going to do here while we're doing this. Uh, I go to reboot it. And you're going to notice something kind of interesting here. I'll restart anyway. What will happen is it will not give us an option to press F2, delete. No matter what I do, and I'm going to start hitting uh, delete the minute my keyboard lights up here. No matter what I do, I cannot get into BIOS. Now, this is just one method of getting in BIOS, obviously, is using the delete or the F2 key. But for some reason, all it will do is go back to um, the Windows desktop. So my, my keyboard shut off again. Again, oh, there we go. So you can see I don't, my drivers are loading. So in a moment here, I'm going to be at desktop. There's nothing I can do. So I'm at desktop. Okay. Well, that's weird. So the next thing you can do is you can do a shift restart. And this is going to bring you into your Windows troubleshooter, right? And this, the idea behind this is it's supposed to be able to force UEFI BIOS. 
it's saying that no matter what, you're gonna go into BIOS, okay? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go into Troubleshoot, we're gonna go to Advanced Options, UEFI Firmware Settings. So the idea is I'm gonna now restart and I don't, I shouldn't have to do anything. It should go right into the UEFI BIOS. You're gonna see in a moment, I'm gonna be right back at my Windows desktop. Now mind you, I have, yes, I've tried it just to make sure that maybe I was supposed to do something. I've done the delete, I've done the F2s. I'm just saving you some of the time of some of the many troubleshooting steps I've uh, gone through. Along with this, and you can see already my drivers are loading on my hardware here, so you already know Windows is booting in the background. Yes, it's blacked out. I'm gonna tell you what's causing it here in a moment. I've gone as far as unhooking the fans from the motherboard to try to force a CPU fan error, which will then say F1 to, to um, enter setup to fix the problem because it won't let you go beyond that. Um, when you do that, everything freezes. I have uh, physically cleared CMOS by removing the battery. I've pressed and hold the CMOS button on the motherboard. There are two different methods of clearing CMOS. The easy one with the ASUS is supposed to be using the CMOS button on the motherboard. Um, I've called and sat on the phone with ASUS for quite some time. And I'm gonna show you some of the emails I got here in a little bit. Uh, some of them are very relevant and it's just very strange the customer service or really lack thereof that ASUS is providing in this scenario. What I found out is that with the display port cable connected, that is what the, is causing the, the, uh, the monitor somehow to not allow us to get into BIOS. Something is happening through the graphics card, motherboard, monitor, not really sure what, to where with this setup, I cannot get into BIOS. And uh, the graphics card I have is an Asus Strix 1080 Ti. Uh, their overclock, uh, I think it's the O11G version, whatever it's called. Uh, on this currently, I'm going to be installing my 2080 Ti's uh, in shortly here, actually probably next week, I hope. I'm just, again, I'm waiting on my, uh, my cables. But it doesn't work with the display port. Now, mind you, it does work with HDMI. So if I, and I've, I've also gone back and I've swapped, swapped out the HDMI cable, or I'm sorry, the display port cable that came with the monitor. It's supposed to be a certified cable, but you know, it doesn't say in there that this is a certified, certified display port cable. So I bought an actual certified display port cable. Same results. I was like, what in the world? And then I remember when I was setting everything up, I was actually using a different monitor. Also happens to be Asus, but it's not a gaming monitor. It's just a 60 hertz uh, refresh panel um, that I use just because I like it. And it looks really nice for colors and everything. So I hooked that up via HDMI. The funny thing is, is everything works. And I'm actually gonna show that to you here in a moment. Um, actually, I'll start doing that right now because it's really simple to do. I've actually left them plugged in purposely for this. So, and I actually have a set, so the, the, I've tried everything in the monitor settings. Right now I've got it set so that it doesn't auto switch on input. I have to manually select it. Uh, there's a weird thing with that as well, but, so I switch over to HDMI and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and restart, restart. Now you'll notice something that's gonna happen here in a moment. I'm going to have the option at the bottom in big letters to F2 or delete to get into BIOS. And it'll come up here shortly. But why is this? Why is it that, is it a problem with the graphics card? Is it a problem with the motherboard? Is it a problem with the monitor? It seems to be a problem with the monitor. And here's the reason why is I have other monitors that use display port cables and I can get in just fine. So I'm like, huh, well, it can't be the monitor or it can't be the motherboard. And it can't be the, um, it can't be the graphics card because it works fine with other monitors using display port. So the only thing that's consistent in, in this is using the Asus PG27UQ monitor via display port to get to BIOS. 
it's annoying as hell to have to change the cords just to get to BIOS. Now, I'm gonna, I wouldn't be so upset if it wasn't for the responses I started getting from ASUS. And I'm actually going to switch over here. I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. Okay, so here's what I wanted to show you. First off, I do want to talk about the upside of the monitor and what it's supposed to give you before I talk about the complete and utter failure on the behalf of ASUS to offer even acceptable customer service. This monitor is the 27, uh, PG27UQ, it's a 27 inch 4K monitor. And these are the specs, it's really straight, overclockable to 144 hertz. Yes, it's an overclock. There's stuff behind that. It's fine. It doesn't bother me. I usually leave it set at 120 hertz. It's a G-Sync HDR quantum dot IPS Aura Sync monitor. We've already uh, discussed the fact that Aura Sync doesn't work on this. So that's worthless. So there's one um, feature that is worthless. It's just not even working on this with their own equipment. Mind you, an entire Asus ecosystem. This thing, it does look amazing. The, the picture quality is fantastic. Gaming is buttery smooth. I mean, everything is absolutely, it's unbelievable for gameplay. So when you have it up, it, that's fine. And, and again, the whole my whole issue with this thing isn't the monitor itself solely, but the lack of support from Asus. The G-Sync is fantastic. But what I wanna show you here is what's really important. So. In their specifications, they tell you that in order to get the best response time or the fastest refresh rate, you have to have it connected via DisplayPort. Why? Because with HDMI, it caps at a 60 hertz um, refresh rate. And it, it says right here, HDMI, 60 hertz. That's, that's where it's capped at. Now with the DisplayPort, you can get the faster signals. So you can get, you know, you can get, use the 144 hertz. You can use fast, you know, that's the whole point of DisplayPort is to be able to give you those faster refresh rates. That's also what's gonna give you your G-Sync support. That's what's gonna give you your, um, your actual HDR because you cannot use HDR within uh, this with HDMI. So I email them first. That's I, I actually start with email. And the response I get leaves me utterly flabbergasted. Thank you for contacting ASUS product support. My name is Javon. I do understand your query. I'm more happy to assist you with resolving this issue. Right. So he apologizes. Check to see if plugging DisplayPort to the video card or the iGPU. Obviously, it's to the discrete card. I did check that just because I was like, well, did I have a brain dead item or a brain dead moment? That does happen, right? Uh, and make sure that I have it set to DisplayPort, which obviously is the only way you get any type of um, picture. But this statement here shocks me. DisplayPort has different resolution than HDMI. Please use HDMI for best results. Are you kidding me? You're gonna tell me that I have to use HDMI to get the lower quality resolution, to get the lower quality refresh rate, to use basically none of the features of the $2,000 monitor because you don't wanna actually fix the problem? Are you kidding me? My God, so that's where it started. And I have a litany of emails as you can see here, dealing with them on this. I then finally got a hold of them on the phone. I got a hold of a, a um, support rep that seemed to understand. He presented himself as understanding and wanted to offer a true customer support experience that was worthy of this product. He sets up the advanced RMA, he gets things rolling. And then he sends me the thing to authorize my card, which is reasonable for a short period of time while they ship me the product and then for the time that it takes for them to get the product back. That's, that's reasonable. I don't have a problem with that. But then he sends me and he wants to, be, to charge me $2,699. Okay, we're going to look at something here. 
You can buy this on Best Buy for $17.99 with an MSRP of $19.99. The MSRP of $19.99. You can buy this on Micro Center for $15.99 with the MSRP of $19.99. You can get an open box on uh, Asu, or on Newegg for $14.99 with an MSRP of $19.99. So they want to charge me 130% of retail to do this and 175% of where I can buy it anywhere? I mean, come on, Asus. How hard up for money are you? Are you that desperate for cash as cash grab to hold my money for a period of time that you can't even charge an appropriate amount at least charge me msrp but seriously that's what you're going to try to charge me is two thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars to hold and then on top of it i said okay well how long are you going to hold this for well we're going to send it ground you should have it in seven to ten days we'll give you a ground return which should take seven to ten days so you let, let me get this right. You want to hold 130% of MSRP and 175% of what you can actually buy it for for three weeks? Are you kidding me? That is the customer service that Asus was willing to offer to resolve this issue. Yeah, I, I, I am absolutely shocked. I get a hold of people further up the chain and they're like, well, no, that, that's our price. That's what we, we think it should be worth. 130% of MSRP. And that's really, that's their firm stance. So Asus at this point has offered such a horrible service that I don't even know what I want to do at this point. I mean, do I just use, do the standard RMA and maybe get my monitor back in a couple of months? Because what they then told me is if I don't advance RMA, it, they actually don't have a replacement available unit, uh, a replacement unit available. They have a replacement unit available if I advance RMA, but otherwise it's going to go through the standard channels and maybe get fixed, maybe re get replaced. And it could take two months. Come on, Asus, get your heads out of your asses. Seriously? What I want to do is put this aside. I want to go out and buy the Aorus uh, gaming monitor that was just released. I want to start using that and see what that's like. Tell Asus to pound sand, probably send it in for the standard RMA, and just not buy Asus products any further because of this one experience. It's so bad. That's where how I feel. And I've been buying Asus products for a long time. I have a list of stuff going all the way back to the to the, uh, what the M99FX Pros, I, I might have that, that model number wrong, for the motherboards, uh, graphics cards back to the 290Xs uh, and the 780Ti's that are just strictly, that's all I've done is model over model bought new Asus stuff. Motherboards for, for the AMD and for the Intel, and this is the type of, pro, uh, of a service they provide. I don't have an issue with their graphics card services. They're actually fairly quick and it's reasonable because they actually hold the MSRP on those when they do an advanced replacement. Same thing happened with the uh, Maximus 11 formula that I did. They charge me 449 for the advanced RMA. Not a big deal, but they want to charge me $2,700 to do an advanced RMA on this. Otherwise, it might be three weeks before uh, for, for them to hold my money. Otherwise, it's like a couple of months before I may get this monitor Mac back or I may not. I mean, it's unbelievable. Anyway, that's my rant for today. Buy at your own risk. I guess that's the only thing I can say is there are some people that are saying, yeah, it's the best gaming monitor they've ever used. And I hope that that's the case for that kind of money. But then for those of us who it's not working the way it should be, and this is the experience that we're left having is just use HDMI because they don't want to actually solve the problem. Oh, it is unbelievable. I mean, just, oh. Anyway, that's my rant for the day. Uh, I hope you have a good week. I'm going to be back next week, hopefully putting in the, um, the SLI configuration of the 2080 Ti's if I get my cables in from Cable Mod. If not, maybe we'll take a look at the, uh, my um, 590 uh, card that I got from uh, Sapphire. Uh, curious to see how that thing performs. It's just been sitting off to the side. Anyway, if you like the video, uh, you know what to do. If you don't like the video, you know what else to do. Uh, comment, subscribe, let me know how things are going. 
Anyway, thank you very much. Have a great week.